JT Shaver here with New Layer, and in this video I'm gonna give you a behind the scenes look at all the upgrades and changes I made to the New Layer Studio 2.0. If you haven't watched my original studio tour, I'll have a link to it here. I think it still has some useful products and tips, especially if you're working on a budget or building out your first studio space. I learned a lot during the evolution of my first office studio, and this one was built to produce as high quality content as efficiently as possible. This video does have some of the more typical things you would expect, but there are some hidden gems like my custom light and microphone stand, so watch the whole thing to see some of those. The heart of this setup, where I sit and stand for hours a day nearly every single day, is my Sway desk from Ergon Office. There's a lot of sit-stand companies out there now, but this time around I wanted something really high quality and most importantly with a real hardwood top. Nothing against the cheaper brands out there, but in my experience, laminate just doesn't hold up for serious work surfaces. The last three desks I bought, I had to replace within a year or two because the laminate on top was chipping on the corners, so this time around, I knew I wanted something that would last a long time. I have the 30 inch by 72 inch version with the black frame and walnut top, so it has a ton of surface area. The controller for the motorized sit-stand functionality of this desk sits in a little cutout on the desktop, so it's really sleek and I have presets for both stand and sit so I can change between the two almost instantly. I also got some of the matching accessories like the optional desk shelf which lifts my monitor up so I can keep some other peripherals underneath and I'll get to that a little bit later. I started with just one and then I had to pick up a second filing cabinet because as you can tell, I'm kind of obsessed with symmetry. I love the optional desk drawer, not only for the storage space, but it's made with a metal frame, so I can magnetically attach some secret little pocket lights to pull out whenever I need them. The cable management solution is one of my favorite parts about this setup, not only because it cleans up all my cables, but it acts as a shelf for my big tube light to sit on to add some light to my background. The last piece of my desk setup is the U2 ergonomic chair. I previously had a Herman Miller Aeron, which is arguably the best all-time all-around office chair, but honestly, this one is much more customizable and comfortable for me. One thing I do with every office chair that I've ever had is to change out the casters for some high-quality rollerblade style wheels. I know the look isn't for everybody, but the functionality of these and how smoothly they roll, especially on carpet, is just something I can't pass up. Overall, the style and functionality of all the Ergon Office pieces fits me perfectly, and I won't lie, they are more expensive, but I think the value of what you get and the longevity of everything is well worth the price. The weakest part of my original studio space was the audio. Everything in that space was a hard surface, and that house was built on a subfloor, so there was just way more echo and reverb than I wanted. This time around, I went big with 12 acoustic panels from GIK Acoustics. Previously I had like 20 of those one square foot by one inch thick egg crate style foam panels. After using the real deal, I would much rather have just one or two legitimate acoustic panels than even like 50 of those cheap foam ones. They work infinitely better and the thing I like about GIK Acoustics specifically are their designer series of panels. They add a ton to the production value, not just audibly but visually as well, in my talking head setup and in my little b-roll area. I got the four inch thick panels but they're plain colored, two by three foot, two inch thick panels are less than 50 bucks. The difference in sound dampening you get with these panels versus the cheap foam ones for the same surface area is seriously incomparable. Everyone who comes over and walks into my office and starts talking is shocked at how good it sounds in here, and one person even said it sounded like they were talking inside of a marshmallow, so if that doesn't sell you, then I don't know what will. Lighting is obviously one of the more important parts of a studio setup and is kind of what I'm known for. Overall, I wanted something really simple so anyone watching can replicate the look that I have with any type of light and any brand. Although the ceiling in this space is taller, the actual room is a little bit smaller, so again, like my last studio, I'm using the IntelliTech Lightcloth LC160 2.0 powered by IntelliTech Pocket V batteries. The LC160 is a foldable light mat with a separate battery and controller box. It's very compact, but it still gives me a large light source for nice even lighting and soft shadows. I've got it on an impact rolling light stand, that way I can pull it out easily without having to set up a ton of equipment whenever I need to record a video, but still push it against the wall when I'm done using it. I'll talk about all the pieces in my mobile stand shortly, but first I wanna finish covering the rest of my lighting. In the background, I have two Nanlite Pavo Tube 2 6C on mini per gear tripods. I also have the Nanlite Lido Light 5C on the speaker opposite my key light. 
Ideally, I might set up a light out of frame to give me some rim or background lighting, but with the way my office is situated, I had to use the practicals in the background to light me and give me some separation from the background at the same time. All these lights are only set to about 5% brightness, so they'll last a long time and I only have to recharge every few videos or so at the most. Like I mentioned earlier, I have the Nanlite Pavo Tube 2 30X sitting on the cable management shelf on the back of my desk. I picked this light because finally Nanlite has a good mobile app so I can sit here and control that light and leave it on all the time without having to reach behind my desk and adjust it whenever I need to change the color or brightness. On my other speaker I have the Divum Pixu Max which is a neat little pixel display that I use for the New Layer logo. It does a lot of other cool things like animations so if you're looking for an inexpensive way to add some flair to your background definitely check that out. When it comes to speakers I personally use the KRK Rocket 5s but there are a lot of good studio monitor speakers out there now. More importantly, I wanted to show you these desk mounted speaker stands from Wavebone that I found. These stands are really heavy duty and they clamp right onto your desk and they clear up a ton of desk or floor space compared to the traditional alternatives. So they're a small thing that make a huge difference for me. For audio, I kind of have two different setups, one for talking head videos like this and one for when I'm doing podcast or voiceover style audio at my desk. First, I'll cover the talking head setup because it's part of the rolling light stand contraption that I mentioned earlier. I've switched from the Rode NTG3, which I really love, to the Rode NT5 for indoor dialogue, and I have that plugged directly into the Deity HDTX. Apart from the heresy of using two different brands together like this, it's the perfect setup for me. The NT5 is tiny and lightweight and sounds especially good on male voices, and the DD HD TX is a wireless recorder and transmitter at the same time. It also provides power to any microphone, so I record directly into the unit. That way, I can record audio with zero cables. The HD TX specifically is one of the best all time pieces of gear for content creators ever, in my opinion. To get the microphone boomed out over the light on my rolling light stand, I've devised a chain of accessories to make things as flexible as possible. I can't continue this segment without giving a shout out to Caleb Pike for some inspiration with this setup. He's done a lot of really cool DIY customized setups, so make sure you check out his channel for some ideas too. For mine, I started with the Impact Rolling Light Stand from B&H. It's super lightweight and more portable than a regular light stand, although it's not quite as wide at the base, so I did add a sandbag to make things as safe as possible. The first thing I added was the Avenger D230 grip head, which is just a normal grip head on one end, but on the other it's a clamp that can attach to any tube. This lets me attach it directly to the light stand and adjust it up and down easily. Then I took the Rode PSA1 boom arm and stuck that directly into the grip head so it can boom out up and over my light. I've got a Rycote pistol grip shock mount attached to the boom arm so I have about a million axes of movement and if I'm doing something like shooting b-roll I can pull that boom arm directly out of the grip head and it just makes it easier to move around. Overall this setup has been great so I can put it away when I'm done and it doesn't take up a lot of room so hopefully this gives you some ideas to customize your own setup. When I'm recording audio at my desk, I use a few different items. I've been using the Focusrite Scarlett series of audio interfaces for almost a decade, and they've always been rock solid for me. Right now I have the Generation 3 Scarlett 2i2, but they come in different sizes with more or less inputs depending on what you need. The DDHD TX I mentioned earlier is not only a recorder and wireless transmitter, but can also be used as a computer audio interface too. So if you wanna save some money or get something super portable like that, all you need to do is plug it into your computer via USB-C and you're ready to go. At my desk, I use the Rode Podcaster Condenser Microphone, again on the Rode PSA1 Boot boom arm and I have that using the desk clamp because I'm definitely not drilling a hole into this desktop. As a side note, I highly, highly recommend only using brand name boom arms. I know they're double the price, but I've used a few cheap alternatives and they're just really frustrating to use. So I think this is one area where it's definitely worth the cost to avoid that frustration. If something like the Rode Procaster is too expensive for you, then the Rode PodMic is a beast of a microphone for under a hundred bucks. I did a video showing how to make any microphone sound more professional using the pod mic in my example, so I'll link to that here if you want to learn how to enhance your audio no matter what microphone you're using. The final piece of audio gear are the Sennheiser HD560S headphones. Previously I had the Audio-Technica ATH-M50X, 
which are good headphones, but there's three things about the Sennheiser ones I like a whole lot better. Number one is that the Sennheiser headphones are about 20% lighter weight. My old headphones would start to hurt the top of my head after 30 or 45 minutes, so I was constantly having to take breaks or put them on my head in a weird way. The second thing is that the HD 560S are open back, so you can hear everything that's going on outside of the headphones. I personally like this because I like being aware of my surroundings at all times, and closed back headphones kind of feel like they're putting pressure on my eardrums where open back ones don't. Lastly is simply the audio quality and these Sennheiser headphones have gotten rave reviews about the accuracy and quality of the audio compared to much more expensive headphones. Funny enough, I think my actual camera setup is one of the least important parts of my overall setup. I filmed a lot of shots using my Canon M50 and kit lens and honestly, nobody ever said anything. I did a lens review with that camera using some Viltrox lenses and it has a ton of sample photos and video that I still think looks really great. Cameras are so good now, even on phones, that lighting and audio are much more important, but I'll go over my setup starting from the ground up. I had about 10 tripods before I moved and honestly, I have no idea how most of them got into my house. I got rid of most of those and this time around did my research and picked up the iFootage Gazelle Uprise TC5 which is the best all around tripod that I've ever used. The size and weight makes it perfect for both the studio and for travel, and the build quality could not be better. You can put any type of head onto this tripod, but this one comes with what iFootage calls their fast bowl. The fast bowl articulates enough to be used for a lot of video work without having to put on an additional tripod head. So for talking head setups like this, it's perfect and just limits the amount of gear that I have to worry about bringing with me or setting up. Overall, the TC5 has every feature that I could ever want with a tripod and it'll last forever. I do have the Kessler quick release plate system attached to the top of my tripod so I can quickly pop my entire rig off and onto a slider or use it handheld. If you find yourself switching it up a lot during shooting, definitely look into a quick release system because it makes life so much easier. The one that I have from Kessler is super heavy duty and fast as a quick release plate should be. So it just increases the speed at which I can work and I don't have to worry about my camera falling onto the floor. I'm using the Sony a7S III with the Tamron 28 to 70 f2.8 and that's attached 90% of the time. To me, this is the most perfect hybrid camera lens combo in existence. Although I did pre-order the Sony a7 IV, so we'll see if my opinion changes when that finally arrives. I also use the Freewell magnetic filter system with their 1 8 power glow mist attached 90% of the time when I'm doing indoor shoots. After using a magnetic filter system, I will never go back to a fully threaded system because the magnetic one makes it so much easier to swap filters between lenses. I used to use a camera cage brand that shall not be named here, but recently switched to Nits or Neats. Somebody leave a comment and let me know how that's pronounced. Anyways, I switched my camera cage and top and side handles, and one of my favorite new accessories they have is simply their monitor mount. I can finally swivel and tilt my monitor to my heart's content without it ever loosening up, and that's a problem I had with every single other monitor mount that I used over the past few years. Again, it's something really small, but it eliminates frustration and just makes working more fun. There's a few other small things that I've changed or added, like my mechanical keyboard and light speed mouse, which I swapped from a felt mouse pad onto a leather desk pad, also made by Ergon Office. I also have some dedicated reviews on some items I did or didn't mention in this video, like my 32 inch BenQ monitor. So I'll have extra links in the description if you wanna check those out. So what do you think? If you were building your dream studio, would you use the same stuff as me? Or is there anything you do differently? Leave a comment and let me know if this video gave you any ideas for your own studio build. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.